So this is the very first casting out of the mold. What you just watched were clips of me applying the thin skin of silicone over top of the sculpture. I then built a jacket of plaster over top of that, which I didn't show just because of time constraints. But in the next series, I will definitely go over all of the different techniques that I use to make the finished mold. But in the case of this one, we skip that for right now. This is the very first casting, and for me, I always do the first cast very thin, just to see how it's going to come out. I get really impatient, to be honest, and I just want to see it. So I do a really thin roto casting, which just means that I actually pour a very small amount of plastic resin into the cavity of the mold, and I spin the mold around so that it coats the interior space. And because the, it gets more viscous as it cures, I can really control where it goes. So this is extremely thin. It's very thin on the inside. And you will also see that this first really quick casting also pulls all the little chunks of clay out from the inside of the mold. And maybe I'm just being lazy, but I'm pretty sure that that's something that a lot of sculptors do. If you sculpt and this is something you do, let me know down below. If you think it's terrible that I do this, let me know as well. It works for me. I don't feel like I'm wasting that much material. I love my first casts, and I usually keep this first cast for myself. You know, it's kind of tough to keep everything, one of everything that you make, but pieces like this, especially because it was my very first piece that I've recorded and put out to YouTube, and for all of you, I really kind of like this one, and I'm really excited about painting it. Speaking of which, this is the final video of this series, and so we're not going to be painting this now. The reason for that is, I actually want to do a couple of castings of this little guy, and they're going to be uh, more sculptures of dinosaurs in the very new near future for this channel. So what I want to do is, is because it's so time consuming to paint these, I want to get a few castings, at least three of this one and three of the next dinosaur that I'm going to be doing, and have those all set up so that I can paint all six at the same time. Working a full-time job and doing commission work and making this channel means that I have to be very careful with my time, and so I want to do as many of these as I can all at once. I'm sure that you all understand, I'm sure you're willing to forgive me on this, but uh, that's just how we're going to do it for this one. Having said that, I do have a sculpt from a while ago that I did of this Velociraptor, very much a Velociraptor from the Jurassic Park series, and this was the first casting from that mold, which, just like this one, I will keep for myself. And I did paint it up. I'm actually, let me bring, I'm going to swing the secondary camera that I have over here around, there we go, so that you can see some of the details of this little guy. There it is. This is almost like a stream today. But yeah, so you can see, kind of get the idea of what the skin textures and even painting the eyes is going to be like for the future Triceratops that we have here. And while I have this camera over here, let's look at some of the detail that was picked up in the mold. It really grabs everything, and you've probably already noticed that this guy's horns aren't present. The reason for that is it would just make for kind of poor casts. It would be kind of an air trap to try to get it all the way up to the tip of the horns, and what I mean by that is the, the liquid plastic, uh, especially because I do plan on rotocasting these, again, spinning it so that it has a thin shell. So, it's much better for me to actually remove the horns, and you can see these little impressions here. These are actually keys, so I will make a separate mold of both horns that will key in and lock into these sockets and I'll glue those in before I do any of the painting and finishing and refining of it. It just makes the process a lot faster and a lot more reliable. Whenever you're doing casts like these, a big air bubble can really kill the whole piece, and again, I'm working under some time constraints, 
And so, for me, it's just a little bit of insurance that the castings are going to come out uh, as well as they can each time. So, now that we've seen this, we're going to say goodbye to the little camera. There we go. We're going to come back to this guy. So, I really hope that you have enjoyed this first series. If you've stuck with me this whole time, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. I mean, in the last week I've doubled the number of subscribers that I've had to the channel, and today, July 17th, 2018, actually marks the first day of the channel as I've been kind of envisioning it for the last month or so. Uh, I've retitled the channel Three Stone Arts, and there will be a video in the future explaining why I've chosen that as the name. And these Triceratops sculpting videos have really been just a way for me to learn. I don't really have any experience doing video editing or this type of camera work, and I'm sure that that shows, but if you've been watching, I would hope that in each video you've seen a little improvement which, with each one where, you know, maybe the camera techniques were a little better, maybe the lighting was a little better. Uh, in this case, I'm now currently in Three Stone Arts' new uh, shooting area. We're going to use that term very loosely, uh, set, set, uh, that I just constructed today, uh, specifically for this release of the channel as it's going to be. And my goal is to bring you content about making and sculpting and mold making and creating and design and characters and really just all of the things that I do in my own time that I love to do and I want to share it with you because if there's one thing that YouTube has done for me it's shown me that there are other people out there as crazy as I am about making things and I have learned so much from watching videos. I mean, 99% of my entertainment, quote-unquote entertainment, I would call it inf infotainment, I think that that's like a buzzword, I'm not sure, uh, but it all comes from YouTube. Like, I, I don't watch TV, I watch tutorials <laughs> on YouTube and learn new things, and then I try them, and why not share that? Why not put that out there for all of you? And I want to be able to have a conversation with you too. Please leave your comments below. If you see something that I'm doing that you're like, that's silly, why would you do it? I know a better way. Share that with me. I want to learn. I want to interact with the community. I want to be a part of whatever this is, this time of making that we have right now where people are so generously sharing their knowledge. I just want to be a part of that. And I hope that in the future you'll join me at Three Stone Arts and come back to see what the next project is. Until then... Keep making. Hey, it's me from the past. This is before I've done the actual shooting for the video that you just watched. How cool does this thing look? This is what it looks like before I've done any of the focusing or the color adjusting or anything like that on the webcam that I use for some of the close-up shots. And this is what the thin plastic looks like under these lights without any of that adjustment being done. It looks like a green screen type of trick, but it's not. This is just how the plastic is reacting. I thought it was super cool. Wanted to share it. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.